Hey, welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. A guy is in it up to here. We're in the process of doing kind of a light restoration on this 1978 Ford F100. And I say light because we're not going all the way in depth. We're taking our 87.24% of the way. It's pretty good. We got the engine pulled out. That's at the machine shop. Now it's time to tackle the interior on this thing. I think we'll get after that next. We'll circle back around to the engine or the paint or chassis after that. I don't know. We don't plan things around here, but I do know I've got carpet. We've got to reupholster the seats herself. We've got dash pads. We'll probably paint the dash. I've got bezels and gauges galore and door skins and whatnots and doodabs. We got everything for the interior. Yeah, it's got to go on this truck. Let's get started. Hey, now listen, I'm not the kind of feller to start a video off by jamming t-shirts down your throat or making this like a merchandise commercial, but we are giving this truck away, as you probably know. Every $5 gets you one entry for a chance to win this rig. So some of you are probably like, what do you, what do you got, you know? And well, I don't know, but Jessica does. I brought her in. She's gonna show you some of our newest merchandise and stuff like that. You can snag over at vicegripgarage.com to get your entry for this rig. Jessica, help me! Oh. Hey guys, Jessica here, reminding you that we have our giveaway going on right now through March 15th. We've learned that everything seems to go really quickly during these giveaways, so don't procrastinate. Head over to vicegripgarage.com right now. We still have a lot of our old favorites available, as well as some of our new things. We have some baby onesies. Wonder what Vice Grip Garage is doing today. Premium motor juice. Longmire, my favorite. Front pocket tee, you guys have been asking for this for a while. That's still available. We have the Derrickism shirt. This is available in three different colors. We have flannels available, dark gray, red. We also have a lighter gray with black. Hats, of course, we have the fitted hats, the American hat, Richardson's. These are all really, really great. We also have lanyards. <laughs> <laughs> Chains. Gas station 9000. These are some cheaper sunglasses. If you want something a little bit better quality, we also have heat waves now available. There's also tons of other stuff on the website. Uh, cheap little stickers and a bunch of stuff, different hats, a whole bunch of other shirts, you name it. And uh, just wanted to take a second to say thank you so very much. Um, we're just absolutely blown away daily yes. by the continued support and the letters we get and messages and emails and meeting you guys in person. And we're so happy that we can do these giveaways and we're really excited. This truck is turning out already really nice. You do and this every time. You end up loving well, it and not wanting to give it away, but it is looking really cool yeah. and we're super excited for yeah, whoever well, wins it. We're excited for one of you guys to get this or gals. Uh, so yeah, head over to vicegripgarage.com. Every $5 gives you one entry. Let's dig into this rig and make it better. So, I read the comments like I always have and do. Starting fluid. Oh, there's still some in there. Top pocket find. A lot of you are fired up about the idea of, hey, let's kind of keep this original-ish, but let's bring it into the here and who and put some touches here and who. Didn't really think that one through. Sorry about that. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead. I do like the, the mat, the rubber mat, kind of the work truck, but I want this to feel cozy and comfortable. We don't know who wins these. It's completely random. And it's not based off of how much merchandise you buy. It literally doesn't matter if you buy a sticker or a keychain or cheap little sunglasses or 20 shirts, honestly. It's just your name goes into a computer machine at the giveaway company and it runs an algorithm and randomly selects a person, okay? And it's gotta be that way, it needs to be fair. There are people that have different incomes or fixed incomes and I don't want it to be based any, any other way than just random. But anyway, what I'm getting at is I don't know who's gonna win this. It could be a little old lady that gets cold and she wants some cozy, 
carpet. I don't know, it could be a kid's going to school rig. It could be someone that's retired and wants some cushion here. I'm not, we don't know who's gonna get it. So I'm gonna try to walk the line in the middle a little bit. We're not gonna go crazy and put buckets in it. We're gonna keep the bench, carpet, dash pad, bezel. I think we're gonna put some digital gauges in it. I said it. And that's gonna tie into something we're doing up here down the road. We're gonna want some good gauges. Probably a headliner. I've got lenses and pedal pads and I just went catalog. Yes. So let's start, I think, by getting the seat out, get some elbow room in here, and then we'll figure out what to do next. I gotta put this in the cabinet. Does it still work? Oh, wow, yes. Oh, going down, got the Cosby spray. Look at all the goodies back here. There's a lot. This all thread's worth six bucks alone. Well, we'll get all that in a minute here. We gotta get the seat out first. Let's see what we got here. Oh, Ford Engineering. Let's hide the bolt in between these two. Got it. And then there should be one. Yeah, I can barely feel it. It's right here. I'm not sure. Oh, looks like it might slide. Yep. So we'll do the back hinders first. Right there. And then we'll probably wrestle with the front ones. Get this thing out. And we are going to just reupholster this ourselves. See if we can pull it off. Done it before a few times. I think you guys can do it at home too. Just need some hog rings, some pliers, and some stuff I'll show you here in a little bit. For now, need some cools. Jebediah's horse carriage. Okay, so this should go right on here. Yep. Okay. We got some boom booms back here. Dr. Dre would be proud. I don't know if they're Pioneer though. Lost my retainer thing in this. So now these just do this. It's convenient. Auto eject. Oh, we got jumper cables. All sorts of goodies. Pretty sure I can fill my Christmas shopping list for next year just up behind the seat here. <laughs> Now the real fun part, gotta get up front here. Loosen these up one sixteenth of a turn at a time. It's gonna be real, real fun. Nope. Oh good, my ratchet won't fit. That's a pretty good design. Okay, do I have a ratcheting wrench? What I meant to say was I'm gonna get in there with this and potentially maybe we could always just go straight to the torch, okay? That's a possibility. Can't be tight if it's liquid. Oh, that seems to be doing it. Oh, this actually has a key. That's pretty neat. Here I am again. Nice thing about these newer trucks. Yeah, I said newer. It's late 70s. That's pretty much brand new. The hardware isn't just absolutely destroyed. You know what I mean? Did Bradley do that? Put all the hardware from the shifter into a bag? Huh. Oh, it's not a funny bone at all. Whoever called it that has a real sense of humor. Snap or strip. I think I got it. Whew. I'm sweating. That means we gotta we gotta slow down here. Let's bring the pace down. I took this door off because we gotta run into town here in a little bit. I'll explain that later. Just relax. Okay. That's a good shoelace. Oh, never mind. All right. Guy likes to come out the drinker side because he ain't got to go left, go right selector in the way. But I got a mess over here. I don't know how this is going to go, but what can we do but give it a shot? 
I think the belts, I think the belts are not happy. Is this one even plugged in? Okay, I see. This is the seat cover cords is all not doing things right. Is that even going to fit through there? No. I see the issue now. Ooh, wow. That's a newer looking screwdriver. I'm going to have to take the belts of seat out with the seat and then we'll figure it out from there. Okay. Well, how does this make sense? T50. I know that's what it is. Doesn't fit. T50, 3 8 drive. Why a glass? Help me understand that one. Oh, it's just me again. <laughs> okay. Giving her the ooga do go. Come on. Yeah, again with the fresh hardware. That is slicker than goose poop on a pump handle. What is this? Engine oil? Okay. Wow. I'm gonna have the seat cover paid off before we even get it out of here. Hey! Okay, I like to, oh, no way. What have we got? Is that a 10 millimeter? I can't believe it, but it is. I never lost one because I don't use them. But I got a, another Rister one. Sweet. Let's give her another rip, eh? All right. Yeah. Yeah. You're coming with me. Oh, okay. Settle down. What is 37 miles of speaker wire? Ooh, a water neck with the connector for the heater hose. Oh, I think I need that actually. Okay. So much room for activities. Okay, now let's go ahead and see what we got. We got a good shirt, bungee cord without the bungee, Armrest. Fixed. Look at the speaker wire. Thought I was going to have to order some. Nay. What is going on? Kicker! Wow. Oh, that one's blowed up. This kicker was good back in the day. Remember Pile? Yeah. Three of you do. Oh, this one's blowed up too. Well, they're not blown, they're just rotted, I should say. We're keeping them, they're still good. This is a good payday. We got jackage. That'll do absolutely nothing for this truck. I, I do want these jumper cables. That's 30 bucks. Unless you're out of swap meat, probably. Oh, well, I'd get probably eight fifty for these. Fire extinguisher. Oh, it's hot. It's still good. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. We're gonna keep that around. Okay. Mice, <coughs> rats. Really nice four way. My spray away at it. Ah, I think the rest is junk. Ah. It's all on the wrist. It's freshened up because I think we're gonna go ahead and fill this. Why does it smell like fire extinguisher so bad? Huh. That's weird. <laughs> Old radio knobs. Yeah, bungee cord, spray paint, lid, one left glove, that's it.
That's my tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although good, it's knotted. I think we could do a little better than that. Did this have the seat belt buzzer on it? What's this clip underneath the seat? Can't be. Probably. It's a newer truck. Uh, wonder what Bernie Wirtz is doing today. I don't know. Hard to say anymore. Need this thing. Brary. Set that up right. This is good. Putting that on eBay. Okay. Now we vacuum. Uh. I guess you're up, little feller. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It actually doesn't smell bad here, which is surprising. That again, it's mostly metal. I can't believe how good the floors are in this thing. One potato, six legs. Oh, oh. Tasty. Oh, found the first little bit of rust. That's surface rust, settle down. Oh, there is a couple little holes. And I'll just put that back. There we go, okay. Now I'll show you here in a little bit. Let me finish this first, okay? You're getting so impatient, I can't get nothing done. Got this little vacuum at Menards, which is a northern tool store, kind of like the Home Depot. All dare I say better. They're not everywhere. It's not bad for being a cheap little devil. I've had this for a long time, way back to that tiny little red pole barn we had with one outlet and one light. Do I need door seals? Not on this side, I don't think so. But listen, a guy's working on the sill plates. I need to get these out on either side so we could pull out this rubber floor. I got a can of brake clean here. No, we ain't. We ain't cleaning. Well, we're kind of cleaning. But I'm going to use that to clean the screws out in the sill plate because one of the biggest issues you have taking these out is you round off these old screws. Then what? Uh oh, I know. I've been there. And then I figured out you just take some brake clean like this and just get it right, right in the screw head and you're gonna get all of those 40 some years of regret and somberness right out. Then your screwdriver, boop, will fit right in. Where did I put it? Here it is. Watch. Hup. Boom. Butter. The proof is in the cake frosting, you know, as they say. I'm kind of thinking we might roll this outside and pressure wash it for a couple reasons. One, I don't want to crawl around in here with rags. We use a whole box of rags. They're not cheap. Two, I think I need to do that anyway in the engine bay whilst we're moving forward. So can a guy just roll this outside, hit three birds with two stones, and get both done at once? That's what I'm asking. Yeah. I think they were using this little tinsel as spicker war. Could be wrong. Nope, I'm not. Well, wouldn't you know it? I can't believe it, but I guess I got to looking right at it. Both sill plates came right out, stripped none zeros screws, which is great. Now I gotta wheel that trash can back over here, pull out all this rubber, and then we're really gonna see what's going on on the floor. Looking from underneath, I didn't see anything but I do see a couple holes over here. We're gonna have to decide what to do with that. Yeah. Surface rust, not bad, looking okay-ish. Okay. You guys let me know, bleep bloop in the comments. What am I looking at with this wire here? It's got a two-prong connector on it. It's probably driver's seat belt, maybe, I don't know. They had that technology back then. 
good on this side. Well, a guy's got this stripped down like Britney Spears' and the letter page. And it looks a little terrifying, but don't panic yet. We got a couple little holes here. Okay, maybe one right there. Confirmed. I just made it with my finger. But that's the worst of it in this entire truck. Look how beautiful all of this is. Underneath is even more good or ester. Better, more. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the vac in here again. And uh, vacuum this up. I should just, let's delete on this. Delete it. And then uh, I gotta decide if I'm gonna take the effort to power wash this or what we're doing. It's a mess. Vacuuming for the 93rd time. 93rd, 93rd. Ooh, need some auto tune on that. A little bit of reverb. I figured out how to tell if it's real country or not. Has to be before auto tune. The end. No idea what that cord is. Unfortunately, not so good news. She blow it out there, and oh, there. Kind of hard to see. And then we got this little chunk here. Need to clean this up with the wire wheel. Can't leave it like that. We're gonna have to address that. But I think I am gonna go ahead and wash this, and I need to wash the engine bay. Because if we're gonna put shiny paint on it, it can't look like this under here. See what I'm saying? So this is all going to need to be cleaned up as well. Fucking motor mounts. So I think next step, we're going to have to wire wheel the floor. But I want to make the big mess now and get that out of the way. So, hmm. Let's go ahead and take this windshield out. So I think if a guy digs a dull pocket knife in here, and they have kits without this, it's a one-piece seal, and this is like the lock for these. They're kind of a bugger to put in. I might just have a glass guy come down, someone that knows what's happening, to put the new one in. It's on the way. Ordered it up from AMD, and I also got rear seal coming from AMD as well. But this, uh, we don't have to really care about this. Let's take the lock out if we have to. We'll even cut this old window out here. Yep! I said it, look. It's cracked here. It's getting worse by the second. It's got a big crack over there. BB gun or rock chip. It's junk. And the seal's bad and the rear seal's bad as well. And I gotta get this dash redone. So mazel. <laughs> Do it all at once. So we're gonna figure out how to take this winder out and then we can clean the dash up and then roll us outside and just pressure wash everything. Great, good plan. Well, a guy went ahead and worked around it with a professional glass removal tool, also known as a Super Tool 300 Leatherman. Tell you what, crack now. Went ahead and got her out without even breaking it or cutting any of my fingers off. I just ran the old saw around the edge and popped her out nice and easy. Now that it's on the ground, it somehow looks even worse than it did in the truck, but mission accomplished. It's looking like up in the cab here, there's like a molding retainer strip I need to take down in order to get this old gasket all the way out. And now we can take a look Hopefully we don't have any rust or rot around the windscreen because that then we're then we're up to the ears in it. And you know what I mean by in it. Okay. Oh, easy. All right, wrong way. Come on, there we go. Oh, two. 
Boy, they really didn't want this windscreen to fall out. Moses sandals. Oh. Yep. There. That's that piece I was talking about. Yep. A little bit of surface rust there. Ain't scared. Hey, this is junk. Ah, cockroach. It's the last thing I need in here right now. Huh. Tiny little die. Got a good pen. Nope. That one ain't gonna run. 54,000 light bulbs. We're gonna have to keep that in mind. We got just a little bit of surface rust, but it ain't bad. We'll wire wheel this, we'll rust treat it, prime it, brand new, top pocket fine. And the other side's about the same, but see what I'm talking about now? We're gonna clean all this up. I think we're even gonna paint this. This pad has a couple cracks in it. Uh, let's see, example. There's one right here. See that? And then like over here, where am I looking? Yeah, there's a little crack right here. You know? So it could maybe need replaced. It's extra crunchy. So we're gonna look at doing that. And make that mess now as well, and then run that vacuum up here. See what I'm saying? I didn't want this blowed all over the front of the shop here. You're probably going to be really surprised to know that I'm going to run the vacuum. Yeah, weird. Seems like all we ever do anymore. Don't ever let me catch you near just run one little tree. You gotta have the whole pack. Well, a guy did went ahead and hooked his peepers all the way in this, and it appears to get this off. We're gonna have to do some surgicals, but I think we have to do that anyway. As an example, um, this bezel needs to come out, which means the radio fascia needs to come out. I already got the glove box door off. We'll deal with that later, but there's a, uh, I think two bolts here-ish, two in the center, two above the glove box door, and two on the end, or I should say nuts. And that holds this uh, tooth remover on. And uh, I want that out so we can spray clean and the gauges will be out of here. We're replacing all that anyway. So basically we can just pressure wash the whole inside of the cab is kind of the goal here. How did we get bird doo-doo on the inside? I must have had the window cracked on it, maybe. Not sure. Got screw here, 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 there, there, here. Oh no. It ate the tape. Not sure what was on it. Now I'm gonna get the cracking, and then I think there's four screws, if I remember right, that hold the gauges in the place. I'll just either drop them in for now or just take them all the way out, because like I say, those are gonna get dumped anyway. Well, a guy. Dead, go on right ahead and get that out. I also snagged out the music maker. I think I'm going to put one of them Bluetooth ones in where you can hook an iPod in or whatever. I don't know. This came out really quick. Just, uh, was it four cheesy little screws? Boom. It's got this nice big connector, just like Chevrolet did. Boop. And uh, we're going to save this though because we're going to be modifying it for our other gauges. Pretty good shape. A ridge unit there. Now, a guy can get into these buggers up in here somewhere is about. They're in there. There's one right there, actually. I think it's 11.30 seconds. Something like that. So, I'm going to work on that next. Might have to go get the, the youngin' and hang him upside down for help. Not sure yet.
Well, after a little bit of battling and contorting, I'll tell you what, a couple things you need. Three wobble pops and long sleeve shirts. And them dashes are sharp. There's things everywhere in there. You wouldn't believe it. Got elder gator teeth hanging down in there. And if you're doing this with the windshield in, absolutely possible. Two things I'd recommend. Remove the radio, remove the glove box. And that way a guy can get his arm in either direction and get those screws in the center. The other ones are fairly easy, and you saw easy it is to get the bezel out and then the uh, gauge cluster out, just a handful of screws. Now, can we fix the floor first, then roll it out and wash? The problem is it's 11 to 6, 9 or billion late o'clock. It's dark out, can't see nothing. I got to run 50 miles of hose from the spigot. I got to find the pressure washer. I'm sure that's all gummed up. I'm going to have to clean the carb on that and drain the fuel and then put new stuff in and who knows, the pump on it's probably frozen and got cracked because no one ever drains water around here, you know. So maybe we do that tomorrow. Maybe we ruin our lives tonight and try to patch this floor with what I have. Can't get floor pans. I'm up against two rocks and a hard spot. Time is against us. I probably want to do a full floor pan anyway. It's not that terrible. It's a couple, couple small holes. I think we might just clean it up, accessorize it again. I got some thin metal over there. We can cut out some patches. We'll maybe pop rivet it and glue it. Glue it with some glue and seam sealer mix. That's how they do everything these days. Quarter panels, everything. Just glue it on. It's pretty crazy stuff. And then we'll make sure we seal it up nice so it doesn't leak. Then maybe tomorrow early we can roll it out and whatever I was saying earlier. Okay. So a guy's gonna grab a cheek poker, preferably one that's worn and old so they really shoot off and get into your forehead as well. Clean this up so we can really assess the scope of the metal because we wanna be putting fresh metal into older but good now freshened metal so we're not having to repeat this. We don't wanna go through all the work of making this interior absolutely stunning to just have the floor rot in another 10 years. So let me get in here, wire wheel all this up, it's probably both sides. I'll probably go ahead and hit the uh, out here as well while I got it running. This really isn't bad at all, I've seen worse. But we're gonna clean it up any hoose. All that's gotta be taken care of. Look at this blue, that was the original blue. Beautiful, oh yeah, look at this too. Look at that white. <whistles> Speaking of colors, need your help. I'm thinking of painting it that original white color. I kind of like the WT truck kind of basic look. I got some ideas as far as what I'm going to do with the tires and wheels. But if you want to see a different color, bleep bloop it. I don't know that I really want to do jams and everything, but I'll think about it. Silver? Cherry red? Yeller? I don't know. Put her down there. I'll read on it. All right, let's dig in. Well, a guy went to hack. That's what we got. It's, it looks a little bigger because I like to get away from this stuff and get into some fresh metal, which I was successful in all these cuts here. So we got a little spot here, right here, and right here. And just like the, the real cancer, nasty, terrible stuff, it'll just keep spreading unless we try to cut out what we can but we're trying to be conservative here now I'm gonna put some rust treatment on this side while that's drying we can go over and start cheek poking that side and we're making some progress so a guy's gonna be using some of this stuff I use it for the inside of fuel tanks typically but I need to get this aggressively treated and do it quickly so I'm just gonna pour some of this evaporust right here on the floor 
and then we're going to smear it around with some rags and hopefully in about 45 minutes to an hour we'll be ready to uh I don't know if I'm going to prime it or if I'm going to put sealer on it or what we're going to do, but we're going to have to do something. Right? Right. Okay. Glad we agree. Yeah, you don't need gloves or nothing. It's safe. Skin contact. The environmentalist things. And the, the wind and the air or whatever. It's good. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Yep, over here, too. Guys got the frame wall up pretty good too. Out here I'm gonna use the spray. What is this stuff? Rust fix. You guys have seen me use this for years. Well, because you can spray it on. And it dries a lot faster too. And it dries black. That's when you know she's dry. And the evapor rust is eating away on the inside right now. That's turning out pretty good. This is interesting. It looks like they just spray bomb the truck dash. The blue is all the way into the cowl. So they must just <laughs> then they come back and run a tape line and do the the truck color itself. Kind of interesting. Now you know. Now you know. Okay, looking at options patching this stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and use the glue slash panel bond and pop rivets some zinc coated uh, pop rivets kind of an old school way of doing it but the reason I'm doing that is I'm nervous we're going to be blowing holes in this and chasing ourselves with the welder and this is just going to turn into a huge project so I'm going to go ahead and cut out some patches while this is drying and then we'll fit those in uh, we'll pilot it in with some self tappers boop, 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 boop or self-permanence, and then uh, we'll follow that up some pop rivets and then glue, bond this thing in, should be lickety split, and then I think uh, after we wash everything out of here, we'll come back and put some, some sort of uh, direct metal primer or something over top of this. So I got this laid out here on some fresh metal, and I'm leaving lots of overlap, and marked it here and here. And we'll run this speed triangle angleizer don't go crooked line machine whoop whoop and then we'll uh, cut that out here i'll show you watch boom that's what we need right there this piece not that okay All right, guys got this one in, glue it up, pop rivet it in, extremely solid, that ain't going nowhere. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this one quick, and then I'm probably gonna call it a night actually, let that stuff set up, and then tomorrow we can wheel this out and start pressure washing. Well, a feller's got the drinker side floor patched up. I'm gonna go ahead and let it sit overnight as per usual. It's 11 er in the morning. And uh, 
I'm going to get the earth pounders up for a few minutes. I'll be back in the morning. Got to touch up a couple small things, clean up a little bit, then we'll roll this truck outside, get a pressure wash, then we got to finish treating the uh, window frame there and the floors, and then we can start moving forward with projects like painting the dash and doing all that stuff. So anywho, see you guys tomorrow morning. Well, hey, good morning. Guys had a couple cups of joe and got a few Christmas songs down this morning. It's going pretty good. Went over the top of everything with some seam seal this morning and patched a couple pinholes as well. Gonna let that dry. So I think what we're gonna do next is take a field trip, run into town and get some paint. Need some paint for the dash, the uh, headliner. We're gonna be putting in a new ABS headliner. Hopefully that shows up here today. And uh, I want to get some Wimbledon white for now to do the window frame and stuff like that. We've got to sand and treat and do all that stuff. And I want to get some color back in there before we put the new seal in. So let's head in the town, see what we can find. So we're swinging in the town right now. I'm actually using the Jessicalade. Uh, Jessica's going to the town rig. <clears throat> this old thing, we almost got 160,000 miles on it now, but she keeps trucking. Any hoose. I'm actually headed to O'Reilly's. Uh, this isn't an ad or whatever. I'm just letting you guys know that there are some parts stores, O'Reilly's and uh, even some Napa's and stuff like that, that will actually mix paint and put it into spray cans for you. And that's what I'm wanting to do because I to, to dig out some guns and mix paint, run them through guns, get the compressor fired up, put the dryer on just for this little bit of work, it doesn't really make sense. So um, we're gonna go down there, pick our colors out. I got a glove box door uh, that they're gonna scan with a scanning tool. And then they'll be able to put that in the beep bop boops thing, the ditch boop thing. And it'll tell us the color. And then the other one, I just know it's a 78 Wimbledon white. And we'll mix up some rattle cans and uh, grab them and head back. Depending on the color, they can be a little pricey though. 20 bucks a can or whatever but again when you think about the time getting ready and then ruining another hobo freight gun add all that together it's probably about the same so we're gonna get that and then I'm gonna get some engine assembly lube and a couple other things that I know we're gonna need because as a reminder I'm gonna be uh, building this 300 straight six as soon as I get the block and head back from the machine shop and you guys are gonna love what we're doing I read all the comments. I'm listening to you guys. We're not going bone stock. That's all I'm going to say. I think you guys are really going to like it. Okay, we got our Wimbledon white and whatever blue. It's got some pearl in it even, is what the computer was saying. That might turn out real snazzy. It didn't come up as a Ford color, of course. It's just as close as the computer could get it uh, to match. So it is gonna be what it is. It's gonna be a darker blue, we know that, but that's gonna be okay. Darker than, by what I mean by that is like the seat cover or the carpeting, stuff like that. Well, we're back in the shop here. I'm gonna go ahead and move the table and some stuff over here, roll this outside and get it pressure washed and get this thing drying. You've seen this a million times. Gonna go ahead and blow all this stuff off as well because we got paint and body coming up soon. Might as well get to that too. Remington's in the way. Watch this cold start. This guy's got this thing just dialed. Boom.
Got her pushed in by the old hooves. Jessica helped to steer it and shoved it back up. It is much, much cleaner. Looking good. And got most of the uh, grime out of here. Have to decide what to do with the engine bay. And the mossy moldy stuff is gone. Now I gotta get the sandpaper out. We're gonna go through and we've rust treated it. Now we're gonna sand it. We're gonna sand the dash as well. I'm gonna take this to 400 just here to here. And then the face of it, of course, all of this, because we do have some rust spots, things of that nature. I'm not trying to make this, you know, pebble beach, but can we make it a little bit more gooder than it is now? Yeah, I think so. So let's get the sanding, get this done. Once I get the frame sprayed and this sprayed, then I'm gonna come back and probably pour 15 the floor and get even more coverage over this. And then while that's drying, I've got to do some stuff over in the other barn. And fortunately, the pour 15 does take two to six hours to dry the touch before we can get to anything else. Got her pretty well sanded out. Again, we're not going for perfect. I'm hoping whoever wins this truck is actually going to be putting it to use and not afraid to scratch it. And we got this sanded out pretty good too. So now I'm going to get some paint thinner or ghost earth juice or something. Start cleaning this up a little bit with more focus to the frame because I'm going to put some primer filler in here and then color. And then we'll come back and clean this again and then paint the dash. You know... I've always been crazy, but that's kept me from going insane. You know, so there's that. Okay, how do I live without you? No, I was gonna say, how do I reach that? I'd have to climb up in here again. Or maybe on the other side. See how dirty that was? Oof da. We want the good adhesionals. No one's even gonna see this, but we want the product to stick and last a long time. Be nice to get this dash going. Lots of wiring to do yet. You gotta rebuild that dash cluster. Rassle this pad in. Things need to happen. We're gonna get a little bit of overspray on the dash, but again, I'm not worried about that. We're gonna get the color done on this, and then while that's almost dry, we'll come in and resand the top, wipe this out and everything like that, because we're gonna get overspray on here. I guess I could run some plastic out, maybe save a little sanding. Let me go see if I can find some. Oh. Come to hang out, bud. Daryl's here doing some quality control. Come here. Hey, buddy. Our other cat needs to get fixed, but she has to finish her medications first. So these two don't get along very good right now. Ah, oh, big boy. Oh, you play puppy. Yeah. A good mouser. Okay, back to work. Enough playing around for Pete's sake. Mm. Oh, hey, you putting more dents in up there? Hey, we're gonna be painting that. Goose? Or you just like the plastic noise. On the roof. There we go. Look at that one shot. We got the whole dash covered. All right, bud. I'm gonna be painting. You gotta get going. <laughs> I 
Come on. Come on. Come here. You big dork. Come here. Oh. You're getting so fat. You're getting so fat. So this is a filler and sealer, and it'll uh, not only do the usual primer stuff, but it's thicker. It fills in some imperfections, things of that nature. Again, we're not gonna be seeing this, but it's nice to know it's done. And we'll get a nice seal with our new gasket for the glass. Probably gonna do two medium coats. Yep, let that dry. Go get my white out of the Jescalade. Primer sealer is in. That's the second coat there. Gonna let that dry. It'll just be flat when that's basically flashed off. Should be like five, 10 minutes. And then we'll come in here and lay some color in. This is another good way to uh, check our paint color. Just make sure that the 78 Wimbledon white is in fact this, which I'm 99% sure, but if what we had mixed at O'Reilly works, then we know exactly how to tint, you know, for the, the color change, which I'm pretty dead set on white unless there's a mutiny out there and the bleep bloops below, this thing's gonna be a beautiful white. All right, time to add a little color. Probably go three lighter coats with this. Got multiple angles, the guy's got a snag into, you know? Snag. It's harder over here, I ain't got nothing to stand on. Okay, let that cook. We'll come back and hit her again. Second coat in. Just got a letter sitting dry now. There we go. Feel much better putting in new glass, knowing all this is treated, taken care of. Got some primer and paint on it. It ain't gonna run away on a filler or fillet. We'll let this dry enough, then we'll peel this off, get it sanded one more time, wipe down, and then we'll do the reverse. We'll tape from this edge this way, so we're not getting blue, just like uh, actually the opposite of the factory. They did the dash first, we discovered. Well, this is almost dry, pretty close. I'm gonna spend a few more minutes doing something else and we'll come back. Just uh, wipe this down again, and I'm gonna go ahead and tape off the ignition stick, beep, the steering column, and the rubber on the sides here, which is surprisingly still good. It's not shrunk up or anything anywhere. So that's pretty neat. Tape all that stuff off, and by the time I'm done with that, this will be dry enough to go ahead and run plastic off that side. I can't wait for you guys to see this blue. I did a little test shot on the hood over there, and my goodness, does it look beautiful. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get this painted next, and then while this is drying, we could figure out the floor. Ooh, I hear the UPS truck just pulling up. Hopefully that's our headliner. And I got the chrome headliner trim ring instead of the stock color one to make that pop. Fingers crossed. I'd like to get this whole interior buttoned up at once. Wah, wah. Nope. Here's a tip for you. I use this for masking for everything. And I always want strips off of it. So what I did was cut a line in this. So when I reel this off, it only goes around runts until I get to this end and then I pull it, I only cut halfway, and it tears just like that. So I get the same exact length strip every single time, and it makes it way faster taping stuff off. Okay, it is officially time to spray the dash down. And this should dry to a nice matte finish. So it's not gonna be super glossy and reflect off the glass, but it will have a little bit of shine to it. So let's go ahead and lay this color down, 
This is going to be an awesome transformation. Look at the different flake in here. Green, blue, silver. Oh boy, it looks really, really good. Got the glove box back here and uh, just tore this off quick. We'll glue it back on. And I might even get some model paint. We'll see how jumpy I get and redo the silver on there. And boop, we just throw that back on. I gotta do one more coat on this guy, but I love that blue. It would actually be a great exterior color with uh, gloss. So instead of spending $58 million on a new one of these things, which is probably hard to find actually, the old custom walnuts, we got a uh, Universal Chrome Perfect Match paint. I'm gonna shoot some in the cap, I'm gonna use this brush, and we're gonna rebrush the chrome on this piece with a 20 cent foam thing and this. Boom, done. Okay, two medium wet coats on the dash. Looks fantastic. While that's drying, let's finish the floor. So I'm going to just float this thing in pour 15. You're supposed to do two coats, but I'm just gonna do stink bugs. I'm just gonna do one pretty heavy coat, mainly focusing on just the floorboards. I just wanna make sure that this rust just, it can sit still for a minute. Okay, and then uh, while that's drying, I got some other property chores and stuff to do, and then we'll come back and keep rocking. We still got carpet, and this door panel's got a crack in it somewhere over here, I think. And when the dash is done, we got to reassemble that. I mean, there's still lots to go. Time to let that sit. Probably two to six hours, so we'll be back this evening. Figure out what to do next. It's looking good. Back in the shop, the poor 15 is still tacky. Hours later. So we're gonna move on to the seat. This will kill some time, it needs to be done anyway. I'm gonna start by cutting off the saddle blanket seat cover from 1986. Gotta get the belts worked through. And then we're gonna be separating the top half from the bottom half. There'll be a hex or allen key there and also one over here and when we recover it we'll be cutting holes for those to slide through and then actually i might cut these while it's connected still i got a compound uh, side cutters we'll come through and clip all these hog rings some are rotten busted off already that was a really nice seat back in the day that's non-faded nice pattern kind of a woven woven look. There's the original seat tag. That's pretty cool. I imagine that tells the pattern or color or something like that. Any hoofs. These just slip over the corners or the edges. I'm not sure if the new one's going to be like that. Maybe. But we can get all these clipped off so we could peel this off. What a guy's done here is, you can see I took the seat covers off, went around and uh, used this compound side cutter and cut out all the hog rings, separated the top from the bottom. Jessica's here now helping. We're getting the old covers off. And you're kind of thinking we should maybe scuff these up and paint the frames and everything, huh? Well, if we have time, yeah, I think so. It's probably not a bad idea. 
If you're in the seat, you might as well go all the way in. Whoops, am I in your way? Yeah. Well, I've got that one side done, but I can't get this one up. Certainly. It's like harder than it looks. Here, do this. Oh yeah, there we go. See, if you just listen to me. Yeah, I know. Gotta listen to you the first time. So, we'll get these covers ripped off, and then uh, we'll go ahead and try to separate the foam as long as that's not sticking to any of the frames. And we'll show you the bare frames, and I guess we'll scuff these up. Hit them with the powder coating machine, and by that I mean whoosh, whoosh. This is cool. Is that like the... Yeah, the original tag. It's weird, the upper one has one here. So does this. I wonder if two different people made the tooth, and then they... They just didn't all have separate ones? Like I'm saying, like, you were on assembly line making tops all day, and I was on one line making bottoms all day, mm. and then someone else put them Oh, put I see what you're saying. Let's, uh, let's flip it this way. We'll be able to get the foam off the frames. Should be able to just... Or here. I have this device. Easy. You always want to cut towards your face. Yeah, it seems really like a good idea. It's just these corners. What? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> right in my face. Sorry. <laughs> we'll never fill in the hole. I mean, that's literally what they did with that. Yeah, now you unfilled it. We got to fix that now, Jessica. Well, I certainly would have already fixed that anyway. <clears throat> these shrink so bad. With age. There we go. Now we're talking. Can you get it over that post? No. Oh, maybe. Here. I'm going to go. I think I have foam cushion for a bench seat on the shelves. Mm -hmm. You try to get that off of there, and here I'll go find foam. Just trying to get this off of here, but. Can a girl cut it? Maybe. Maybe. Problem is, it's like right on a seam, so it's really. Oh, there we go. Cut that. Ha! Now this side should just. Seat foam. See? <laughs> this is why I'm a hoarder. Yeah. But it's for a Chevrolet. Is in foam, just foam? I think we can make it work. Oh, oh why is it so heavy? All oh. right, got that done. Oh. 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 Almost got the Chevelle. You got it? Mm -hmm. That might be a whole darn seat. All right, let's see if this phone comes off. Mm -hmm. Just try not to rip it. Seems to be coming off. Okay, go ahead. Just don't tear it in case we got to reuse it. Easy but faster. Seems to be coming off. Bench seat, blue, Easy. square body. Oh yeah. One piece. <laughs> Just kind of Look. It's kind of long. Well, it's Chevy, so it's bigger and better. But that might work, Jessica. It actually might. But will your seat cover be too small then? No. This, if anything. Let's see what the people's think. This looks thicker. I meant like get, with- Get down here and like get your eye point. on it. See what I'm saying? I feel like it's really over a little bit too far here. Well, I mean, I'm looking at the height. Height, I think, is not the issue. I just think that if you have like a certain seat cover, it might be too short, but we can try. See this what I mean? Like is, this is too short? The seat cover might be, is what I'm saying. This would have to be bigger than that for the seat cover to be too short. I think it is long. I think it's a lot longer, like wider. Oh. That's what I'm saying. So this is the old furred one, obviously. 
And then this is a new one made for, well, they claim it's made for a Chevrolet, but I mean, is it though? It has the same, like I can squish this down. I just didn't want to jam it in, but this would slide down in just like this one did. And this is in so much better shape. I almost feel like we try to use this. That's what I'm saying. I think we definitely should try to put that coil over the top and see if that'll fit. Because this is the issue. It's pretty. You can get away with this. I've put seat covers over foam that was looked similar. Oh, uh, worse. But then you know it's there always when you're sitting on it. And it's kind of annoying and frustrating. And it'll keep eating away. This foam just mm -hmm. gets so rotten. All right. Well, that's... um put this to the side for now I guess we'll start cleaning up this frame and start spraying that so it dries and then we'll get to the the top or the back getting the compressor filled so we can blow some of the stuff out of here great news is all of the springs are intact nothing is broke all the way down they're in good shape actually so actually this Oh, fixed. I'll squeeze that tighter with the plier here in a second. That's really the only thing. And then we'll, uh, even the uh, retraction is working. But we'll clean this up and get it painted. I'll pull that off. There we go. Sprayer now. Okay, we got some 180 grit. Man, we spent a couple few days now doing a bunch of stuff no one's gonna see, but this doesn't have to be perfect. Just knocking the rust off, and then we'll come in and add color. Actually, we'll hit it with the rust converter first, and then we'll add color. And keep this frame looking good for many moons. I hate the way that this feels so much on my skin. Oh. <laughs> like more than anything. Jessica usually wears gloves. Yes. When she does sand it because she doesn't like the scratchy feeling. It's not really that, it's like the texture of it and like the sound or something, I don't know. Want me to find your gloves? That's all right. Oh my gosh. What? That's this sound? Or was it the squeaky? It was all everything that just happened. Oh. I knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and get this done. You're slacking, I've already got this done. Well, I was standing back so you could do that. Grab that side. We're gonna try to hang it on the Jacks there, pull oh, jacks. Go ahead and hang it on yours, like through here. Like this? Yeah, put down, down. There you go. Yeah. Is that all hold? Actually, we're gonna paint those, so. You want to go find some D1634 or five out of the cabinet? Yep. Well, Jessica's over there painting up that frame. I'm going to go ahead and strip this one down. I'll start sanding this. She'll probably have two coats on that by then. And then she could paint this one as well. How are you coming over here? Pretty good. You're on your second coat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks way better. I mean, it's not perfect. Well, it doesn't need to be perfect. We're but just. It does look way better than trying to get the rust to heed yeah nice I'll uh, start sounding this foam looked fine and the frame great shape I don't know why any of this would be broken there's not even springs back here but I'm just gonna knock the surface rust stuff off and we'll probably just hang it up on the other side of that and let Jessica throw some color on it so that's done and drying this one you can 
Oh. Uh oh. Try to find a different one. I was using a different primer earlier. Jessica's going to primer this, and then I'm actually going to use lacquer on this one. Black, shiny lacquer. Because these sides come down on the outside of the seats, and you see that. And then when you fold the seat forward, you see all these support bars and some of the frame. This we'll never see. This, some of it we're going to be looking at. So I'm going to make this really shiny. This primer is going to let the lacquer bite in. Lacquer is a little bit harder to paint, but man, does it look really, really good if you get it done right. It's got a nice sheen to it and has a, a harder shell. Uh, kind of like peanut M&M's versus regular. Air better. While Jessica's primering that, I've got the seat belts in the sink with scorching hot water and some Dawn dish soap. And I'll let these soak and then uh, I'll come back and oscillate them a little bit and clean them up. They're already looking a million times better. Look at that water. It's gross. Just using some uh, El Cheapo. I don't know, it's a picture of a table on it. What's going on? The trick with lacquer is light coat, let it stick, 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 heavy coat. What the light stick? It's light coat, then let it stick, yeah. Oh, gotcha. See, you just can't beat old school lacquer paint. I'd like to point out though, that these little run spots were there before. Yeah, that's from the factory actually. I thought it was wet when we first got started. I didn't know it was. Yeah. I mean, it looks great. That's what I was going for. This little part here will pop when we get the seat together. And then, like I say, if you fold the seat forward to put cold snacks back there or whatever, ropes, gloves, then this will all look nice behind the seat, you know. But now we're in a pickle. Because this has to dry, this has to dry, the floor has to dry, and my back neck is dry. <laughs> So maybe we uh, call it a night. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Yes. All right. We're back in business. Listen, I'm actually going to sand the pedals, put a primer on those, and paint the arms to the brake pedal, the emergency brake, clutch, the clutch rod and the throttle pedal rod as well. I want those shiny black and we need that dry before we start putting carpet in. And it sounds like a very small task. Like, you know, why was the guy always time doing that? But trust me, when we put new pedal pads on, we have that fresh carpet in there and a nice set of mats. When you're climbing into this rig, whoop, you're looking down going snazzy. Okay, and it doesn't take nothing but seven minutes. Yep, light coat of primer, got the little brake release thing taped off. I got a license plate for a shield. I'm gonna get that fogged up. Now hopefully those will be dry by the time we uh, come to put the carpet in. Workbench engaged. Should be able to just reverse on her now. You know. And then see how this new cover attaches. It might not have that plastic. A lot of the repop covers don't. And by plastic I mean that strip that was kind of stretched over. I believe it was this one and this one. This one might just have a bunch of material that we got a hog ring, which is okay. I'm okay with that. Here we go. That looks so much better. Get off the fresh paint, foam. Okay, now let's go find the cover. See if we can stretch that on. Yeah, it's, I can already tell this is going to be a little tight. 
see it's pretty short, so we're gonna have to stretch this over pretty good. A lot of these companies make these that way so they don't have a bunch of wrinkles and rolls in them, but it also means putting these on can be a bear. Let's see what we can do here. Too bad. Oh, she's got Whoa, 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 whoa. Saddle. Come on. around. I'm gonna flip the truck over backwards. It's not on perfect yet, but hey, I set it for you. I think that's just a flopper. Let's see what we got here. This definitely needs run to something. That doesn't have a pipe in it. What are they wanting the hog ring this to? This has a provision for a pipe or a rod. Let me see if I can think of something here. See, the problem I'm having is this material at minimum needs to be connected to something. What I've got is this big bar here. Now this looks like it was intentionally folded for a pipe or a wire, which might suggest they're intending these two to be brought together. But I'm gonna have to find something because I'm not an interior guy. So let me see if I got anything. Well, I did find some from a previous project. They're used, but we put a piece there and a piece here. That'll be plenty. So now I think I'm going to go ahead and take these bolts out, get this bar, which is the locking uh, mechanism, off and out of the way. And then we'll see if we can get this rung up. Okay. Snip these in. Come on, man. Why won't you just go home? Well, for Pete's sake. There we go. Do the same down here. Boom. Now, can we? And we can. We should be fine. Close to the center as possible. Put a couple rings in this. Then we're gonna break the wrist and walk away. See what it's looking like. Here. Then I just want to flip it around and make sure we got the material where we want it positively before I go gangbusters on this thing. All right. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay, let's get her stitched up. Working our way to the edge, and then the last thing I'll do is bring this pipe up and over. Ah. 
I hear a delivery man. Please have my headliner. Plus, Jessica made cookies for you. Well, guys got this all stitched up. Dr. Frankenstein would approve, but no one sees this. But look how good this looks. That right there is a brand new seat back. Now, if we could just make the bottom look just as good. And as a reminder, we're trying to use a Chevrolet seat foam with a universal cover. I don't know how this is going to go, but let's give it a shot. Jessica did a great job on the frame. Now we got to try to get that foam to fit in here good ish -er. And then that's the cover that needs to go on here. And it's different. I can already see that. So there are these knockdowns right here that go through the bottom. Those are for hog rings. So we're going to have to try to utilize what we can. I don't think we can get up to the springs, but we might be able to hook onto here. We're going to have to get a little creative here. And then we have to leave holes. This is where the bolt goes through the side for the arm. And this is where that arm knocks back into. So we have to cut that out as well. If a guy's working by himself, you're a lone wolf like me, and you don't want to put the whole seat in, remember, you can put just the base in, get that bolted up, and then you could slide in the top and bolt that up in the truck if you wanted to. It's wild how well this fits. And once this gets squished down, when we put that cover on, I mean, the shape. I mean, that's, I couldn't make something. Now, if you needed to make something, speaking of, you can go to like Hobby Lobby, and you've seen me do this before. If you've got a bad section here, cut this out. And then go to Hobby Lobby and get some foam. Set it in. So I just got this loosely fitted on here right now. And I just wanted to say, this already has the uh, provisions through the sides. See that? So once we get this all strapped in, we'll just have to come back and find that hole. And we'll cut that hole out. And we should be good to go. So I threw two rings in here. They're not going through anything, but I just want to hold this material to this edge here and then I'll work the rest of it in but basically see this pipe we need to get that down to here but we're going to start in the middle so I'll pull this tight as I can probably go to the spring and then we need to flip it over check everything and work from the inside out back and forth back and forth back and forth and uh, just take our time but it looks like it's fitting pretty good. Haven't really got on after it yet. We should be able to make this work. Let me button this up. You're not missing anything. It's just a lot of hats, 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 And then I'll show you guys. Covers all on. Fit great. Was able to use all the original hook loop things. So let's flip it over, see what it looks like. Look at that. Looks great. Looks really good. So now I'll go get the belts out of the sink. They've been soaking. We'll feed those through here, get those ready, and we can get the top reassembled. I gotta knock these holes in quick, and then Jessica can help us put this in later. Well, my sink drain didn't bleed off like I thought it would, so I got them out here in the sun. I figured these would be dry, ready to rock. Whoops, well, they're gonna have to sit and wait. Daryl's going to watch guard. Heat up my uh, punch here. Well, China says it's safety goggles. But we're going to heat up my safety goggles here. And then I just find the hole. Press it through. Boom. And now we have a nice perfect hole for our hardware. Do the same to the other side and then we'll set the back on. Okay, now we jam this through the bottom and rip it up. Right, like the hook and then drag something like that. Okay, I'll do this side first since you're over here. Hold it still now. Okay, 
Easy, don't move. Boom. Get a couple threads on it and then we'll do the other side. Okay. And then we can run this one home now because we know we're started on the other side. Just puked in my mouth. What do we got? Mm. Hash browns. Don't forget to put the cheese on them, fellers. Okay. Yeah. Tighten this side up. We should be able to drop it back and it'll lock in place. Okay. Oh, she's taunt. There we go. Unlock it. Nice! We got it, fellers. We'll just have to do the belts a little bit later. Look at that. Beautiful. The seams even line up. Oh, be dipped. Can't believe it, but I'm looking right at it. That is a nice looking seat. You guys can do this at home. Save yourself a ton of money if they have seat covers. Not saying let's not give a pulse for you guys' work. The guys that are still left do fabulous work. It's an art. But if you're just doing something plain like this, take it on yourself. You can do it. Probably not. Well, at least try. So the seat can sit here. Let's move on to carpet. I folded this. You probably saw it laying over here. Folded this out of the box a while ago so we could let it, you know, stay wrinkled up like that. But let's get this in and then I think we're going to leave the seat out because we still have a ton of work to do in here. Look how good those pedals look. We got to figure out gauges, pad, bazeal, glove box door, all that stuff yet. So a guy is keeping the shifter on the floor. It's just a lot more fun to row gears down there than on the column, although there is something nostalgic about three on the trees. But I decided to keep it on the floor. Now, we're not gonna move the hole, don't need to, but we are gonna be adding a shifter boot. You would not believe what this little thing cost, but I needed this exact shape and size to fit that. So the reason I'm showing you this is we can't get carried away when we're making our shifter provision, we'll probably just make a slice to identify where it's at and then waiting for the transmission lever installation before we get crazy and gung-ho on that because I really want that to go around it. Now, you guys see me do carpet 58,912,000 times. It's straightforward. Just start in the center, work your way out. I heat up my punches, burn the holes, once I get it worked out, I like to get a cut and get sill plates in place so nothing gets shifted. And uh, that's really it. There's not a lot of magic in this one. We'll probably cut it back here. It has a lot of extra. I don't know if they're wanting you to go up the, the back wall, but I think that would look kind of rinky. We'll just kind of haphazardly slice it back here somewhere. And uh, we don't really need to go around anything else other than the dimmer switch and maybe the... Uh, Wow, clutch rod right there that almost took my hand off. Okay, plan. Well, I stand corrected. This is one of the best fitting carpets I have ever done, and I've done a couple hundred. I got this through CP Complete Performance, and it's a uh, auto custom carpet kit, I believe. But it's even got the stitched edge. I think it's like a direct fit unit, not a cut to fit, and it is like spot on. I'll be going to try the other side, but look at that. I've never seen that. They must be doing the laser scanons or something. It isn't it crazy how just carpet transforms a truck. It just looks a million times better. Okay. Yes, indeed. This is an exact direct fit 
carpet. It's amazing. Everything lines up perfectly. I guess I'm gonna have to start getting the better one from now on. This is a very heavy rubber back and then it's got the insulation and padding in here. So this is really gonna quiet down the ride as well, but gives it more of a lush kind of uh, look. I wanted to go with a brighter carpet to offset the darker colored door cards and dash and dash pad. Dash pad's gonna be a little bit lighter, similar to the truck seat. You might've seen it laying back there actually. But I think it'll all kind of work in good. And then I plan on painting the headliner as well. We're gonna put a headliner in and that's gonna be this color right here. So I'm gonna to try to find some new hardware, get the sill plates ready, burn some holes, get this knocked in. Okay, while this carpet is nice and fresh, I'm gonna go ahead and put some carpet protector down. And this will keep it clean during the rest of the construction. And we might even just leave it in it. Throw some mats over it. There it is. This is the tricky part. Nice. Usually takes me three tries. Do it. Come on. Come back. Oh, this one's. That one might be gone. Oh, I think I'm getting it back. It's common for me to sit and stuff. Have dirty clothes. That's why we won't ruin that carpet. Really got to get this down to a science, or you just put it on the actual roll machine. There we go. Boom. Like a cloud. All right, all right, I'll show you. This again, okay? Are you over there? Can you? All right, well, first of all, so get in here a little closer. We're gonna take, see this here? It used to be a flip screwdriver. I just ground it into a pick because I've lost all mine. Okay, so all I'm gonna do, find my seat bolt hole, wherever that may roam. Right there, see? You can tell because of what it does. Get in here a little closer. There you go. Now, we're gonna take my safety goggles, heat this puppy up. We want it real hot. And what we're gonna be doing, instead of trying to cut with razor blades and all this stuff, is this is gonna burn a perfect hole, just like you saw on the seat covers where the bolts will go right in and then it sears or singes the edges so it doesn't fray or come unbound or any of that stuff and it lasts for years and years and years and years and years. And years. some gas or something. Now we're gonna just pull this out. We're gonna push this right in. Wall her around a little bit. And I like to do a sss like that. <laughs> Done. It's that easy. Now, the trick is secrets. Well, I'll just show you. Oh, ah, knees are getting bad. We're gonna drop a bolt a in right here. Boop! Because now we're gonna start flipping this carpet back this way to 
finer bolt holes, get things lined up. And what you don't want to have accidentally happen is the carpet shift or move when you've already made a hole. Because these two might line, but now this one doesn't, and you're burning a 17th hole. So always put your hardware in, right? Make sure you got it where you want it. Get your hardware in. Now I'm going to hold my hand here, roll this. I've got a close guesstimation of where this one may be. Right there. Now I can burn this one, and I'll just keep moving. Once the hardware is in on this side, I'll move over to there. Okay. Glad. Glad we agree. Well, here I am. Just pulled up at O'Reilly here. Took old Remington into town. Got to start gathering up some fertilizer and some other stuff for this spring. So I'm trying to hit two chickens with a pigeon or whatever. Anyway, came in to get, uh, I need some more of these screws because they're missing and some more of these because a couple are wallered out and they just don't look, you know, that good. So I'm going to pick up some goodies. I also need to get a headlight dimmer switch for this truck because the headlights ain't working anymore. And 99% of the time, that's the problem. Not even gonna break out the meter. Just gonna get the switch. We're back. Got the sill plate in. I uh, cleaned that in the sink. Hot water, soap, and some gray scratch bright. <laughs> Surprisingly, O'Reilly did not have these screws in stock. They were close, but not quite right. I think they were a number eight head, not a number six. I did order some though. I ordered a hundred just if I have them. I did find all the black hardware we needed uh, for the dash and whatnot later on. Gonna swing over, get the other sill plate in, and then the carpet is 100% done. These are the uh, seat belt holes. You can see how nice of a hole that burning technique makes. It's coming along. Both sill plates in. Look at Jazzy, Jazz hands. Now let's go ahead and get the uh, dash pad in. Well, we got all the access here, basically got to do reverse order. This here is the dash pad. Look at the color match. It's a little bit dirty, but it's a full actual dash, not just a cheap little cover. We're going all the way with this one. Want to make sure the other hardware actually fits. It did come with hardware. But I like the uh, serrated nut that was on the original dash more gooder than this stuff. It's just going to be more clumsy trying to fit that in when it's already difficult to reach my arm in there. So I'm going to find some of that, test fit it, and then we'll get this put into place. So unfortunately the old hardware does not fit. So we'll have to wrestle. What's the new hardware? Good on this side. Wow. I'll try the other side. Yeah. Sticking up just a little bit over here. Can a guy get that down? Yep. Now this looks, this is looking pretty good. Now I got a Ford Escape, maybe we could trade and give that away instead. Nope, okay, yeah, I don't blame you. This is gonna be one nice interior. And I ain't kidding ya. All right, let me get that bolted up. Dash is all bolted in. Why does that look good? Got to clean it up a little bit still, but colors look great together. This interior is going to look sharp. We get the seats in here. Okay, now let's go ahead and put the uh, glove box door back in. I've still got to hunt down the uh, card side of it yet. And a couple screws. I think it's four screws total, but a guy used double side tape to get the. Uh, custom stuff on here. I should be able to, oh no, 
line this up. Drop the screw in here. There it is. left. There we go. Looking good. There we go. <laughs> that looks really good. Glove box is done and looking snazzy. So this is normally where I'd pop a stereo back in this thing. It had a cheesy little tape deck in there. I want something that looks original, but has more functionality. That's basically what we're doing with this truck. Pretty much original, spicing it up here and there with some creature comforts. I got one ordered. They actually just called me ironically and <laughs> I overnighted it, but I missed the deadline. And now because of the weekend, I'm not going to get it until Monday. So that's Another thing we're going to have to come back to later on, it's uh, I think it's called a retro sound. I put one in my crew cab. It looks original. I even paid extra to get the Ford script on the buttons and everything. But it's got Bluetooth and RCA and got a cord for a boom boom. And I don't know. It was not cheap, I'll tell you that much. And then also my headliner is behind. So we'll have to deal with that at some other point. And I got a dome lens and a few other things. We'll mess with that later. I think now I'm going to move on to probably the biggest project, which is the digital dash in here. My favorite. Yes! No. No. The old gauges, eh. I think what we're going to do is use Dakota Digital. We have to modify that up there. They're going to be blue tinted. It's going to look really sharp, I think. But I believe we have to take apart the old cluster and retrofit. It's going to be a project. And then we have to wire everything because we got oil pressure, fuel, voltage, uh, speed sending, all the regular stuff. We got to wire all that in. 12 volt ignition, 12 volt constant, and then fit everything. So let's get started here. I'll show you what we got. So here's the whole get up here. We got, this looks like transgression stuff. Cables, a button, piece of paper. These are all our fittings and sensors. Coolant, I'm sure, oil pressure. I'm guessing is that one. It's nice, it's not the big bell one. This is the brain. It can do GPS if you don't want to do this down to the transmission. This is another module, I guess. Um, we got our wiring, here we go. So it looks like, see see this here? We have to, I think, take the back part of the original piece off, fit these lenses in, and then this then becomes the back, and then this ribbon clips into there. Bam! Digital gauges. Well, that's what we're gonna say anyway. Okay. We'll pretend we didn't open that. So let's go ahead and start by completely destroying our uh, gauge cluster, snapping that in half and ruining it, and then I'll hunt down another one, and then we'll be more delicate not breaking that one, okay? We're gonna use our brand new seat cover as a bench too, because why wouldn't you? get you back to that jazz music in just a minute here but just wanted to show you what I was doing they got these templates and you got to lay them in here and I guess we're gonna go to cotton I'll be I had no idea so according to this this whole section comes out this whole section comes out how I'm gonna do that sure 
Yep. Well, that was a rather cumbersome event. I got the back snapped on just to make sure that it's fine, okay? Everything's fine. Make sure that it's going to fit. The jigsaw wasn't jigging, and then this rotated, and I don't know how to use it. And then this thing, I had to change the blade because the blade was too short, couldn't reach. And then the motor thing was in the way. And then I just started hacking with the old Leatherman, and that got me home. Now, I think, I thought at first maybe these went behind it, but I think these just drop in like that. The trick is going to be this feller here, because there ain't nothing to affix to. But give you kind of an idea. That's going to look pretty snazzy, huh? I think so. And then we'll just clean up this glass really good. We'll probably polish it lightly with uh, some wax. And then I'm assuming that goes right back over the face here. Bam! Digital gauges. These? I don't know. Actually, I do know. I'm going to take these out these three, I'm going to sign each of them, and we're going to drop them in random orders, these three pieces here. So when you're ordering stuff to get your entries in for the F100 giveaway, you may even get an extra little thing, some faded gas gauge or this speedometer or the temp. Yeah, we're kind of, we're just going to pretend we didn't see those. Went straight to the super glue. Got them in. That looks pretty sharp. Gonna let the glue dry and then I'll come back and clean up my fingerprints from jamming those in. Gonna focus on getting, oh, excuse me, pork sandwiches. Uh, this cleaned up. So we can get this back. See how she's pretty filthy. Guys, got the gauge cluster complete, all reassembled. And we'll kind of just set this off to the side. Now, the nitty gritty. We got to get in there and get this thing wired up, find a place to mount it, start running all these wires. Have to get into the original harness for fuel. Maybe power. Dim, blink left and right, and I guess whatever else. So I'm thinking of mounting this right there. We should have plenty of room for that new cluster. And then if it ever needs serviced, you just pull the cluster down and boom, it's right there. The other thing I gotta do is get on the line and figure out this because I need a lot of stuff from that in order for this to work properly, like turn signals and high beam and brake switch and yada 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 yay. Bradley's doing science projects. What'd you make? An electromagnet. What'd you use? Um, a steel iron bolt. You just wrap it with a bunch of wire. You, you don't have to use a switch, but I like to have a switch. And then it should be north and south end. Wow, pretty slick. Thank you. Try it again. Cool, man. Good job. Thank you. Well, this has been a rabbit hole. People claim that this doesn't change through the years, late 70s, mm -hmm. but I found half a dozen diagrams that show it does in fact change, like most Ford stuff only lasts a year or two and then it's completely different. So I found a cluster diagram, which was the old back of the dash, and I've got the ones written down that I think I want, high beam, turn right, turn left, and warning brake. Oh, I should also get power. Grounding, we're gonna ground to this common ground or something back there. Then I gotta take this pin out I compare this, which is why I wrote it down. Get back on my cellular device, 
figure out what color each of these pins are, allegedly, and then come back onto here and go through each of these numbers and make sure that the color matches the one map to the other map to the pin that I'm needing because I don't want to just come in here and cut this off. Also, for example, this is supposed to be red and white and that looks pink and red. So, you know, there's that too. I don't want to cut them all up and then lose the associated pin right away. So this is going to take a little bit. I'm going to be bouncing around back and forth. I'll update you when I figure out what in the devil is going on. Okay, we're getting closer. I think I got the ones cut back that I want. And I don't have one of those fancy expensive things where you could send 12 volts or ground or whatever. So I just tone it out with a little cheap light thing. Boom. This has power. Great. And then I loop that around into what would be the right turn signal, or I think. Bam! Turn signal edge. So I'll do that with the left. And as far as the fuel goes, we'll have to ohm that. But we're making progress. But see, this isn't all murder apart. I could tape this up and set it to the side, and we're only grabbing out what we need. Well, the guy's got everything mounted in here. Turn signals, blinkers, warning lights. We got uh, fuel, even pre-wired the oil, water, speed sender, the tack, and we got our switch installed. This is uh, switch one and switch two for the options on the dash. And I think that is everything that we need. And we can go ahead and cover it up. It's nice and solid in here. And then that ribbon clip just clips in right here. We'll go ahead and set the dash or the gauges back in. Should be able to clip them into place and then fire this thing up. Well, the gauges anyway. We're still missing stuff. Okay. So first thing, snap this ribbon in. sure I'm not hitting anything. This has these tabs. They're like guide tabs. And the metal case isn't allowing these tabs to go back where they used to. So I either got to cut them here or drill them out on the truck side. That seemed to be easier. Let's see if it worked. Let's see if I can get top ones in. Using button head screws. It's better on this plastic. It gets more of a bite. And we're trying to bite down in here. So now, ha! Boom. It looks good. Let me get the old bezel fitted in here. We might have to make some adjustments. Kind of loose in here right now, but looks like that's going to fit just fine. I don't have to shim it out or move anything. I'm going to go ahead and just put the new one in loosely for now. we got to come back and put that radio in eventually, but I want to show you guys what that looks like, and then we can get it out of the box anyway and in the truck. Look at this. Now you know why I spent the time to doll up this over here. Boy, that is looking really good. Yep, it's looking good. Real good. Well, now sitting here looking, this crummy steering wheel, it's, I don't know, it's all gross and sticky. And, oh, the horn works. Wow. 
Well, I'll give it that much. But it looks terrible. Let's see if we could do something about that. Sound check. Well, I tell you what, fellers. I tried my best to throw my back out. You know, hoop! All I did was bend it. And then I tried harder by supporting myself when I was pushing the truck off. And then I did the old hit it in the center with a hammer and pull it. And it'll slide right off. Oh. So we're going to get the little impact out. See what we could do here. Contact. Oh, butter. There. Should clean this up just a little bit while we're in here. The uh, blinker switch works fine, but it's not often you're in here to mantenance these. Get some of this corrosion out. There we go. Okay, old wheel gone. I bet you'll never guess the new wheel. Let me go get it. Here it is. Oh, wait a minute, that's just the stock wheel there. Yep, I know. But it's way more gooder. Slightly different year. But I think it's gonna work just fine. I'll show you why the different year in a minute. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still does turning things. Okay, now. Oh. Yep. Gotta go with that wood now. Come on. I gotta figure out where. This other wire goes for the horn, but that'll tuck into here, and then we screw it in from the back. Yeah, it's gonna look nice. Wheel is on. So very late last night, I decided to tape all this off and spray the column. And then over there, we've got the uh, plastic that goes around the column. Went ahead and sprayed that down too, so it'll match this nice new steering wheel. But this is essentially complete now, besides the radio, and it's not firmly put in the buttons, but we're going to call that good. Now, it's probably time to go ahead and move on to getting the seat in here and the seat belt to get that bolted up. And then we're going to turn our attention to the doors over here. Jessica's holding the seat up over there, so I'm going to procrastinate a little bit. <laughs> Next time, fine. We're going to slide it in. I got the belts in. That was a fight, but they're in nonetheless. You must have cleaned them up. Yes, I did. I scrubbed them in the sink. Everything. Okay. There you go. Right there. Perfect. Thank you. So good. Looks really good. You're gonna get attached to it, aren't you? I'm already attached to it. Great. Well, since we got our holes nice and burned, this part's easy. No guessing, no fussing. I've walked around this truck 916 times minimum. Let's see. Very nice. Ha. 
Taking them back out. Forgot to put the seat belt bolts in. I was just testing them, that's all. They go in, see? That's good. 988 times. Oh! See, what I was trying to tell you a minute ago was we got to slide this forward and we got to put the seat belts onto the floor, remember? Yeah, so let's do that. Got the bolts and the hardware right here. Get my socket that doesn't fit. Well, fellers and fellettes, okay? The seat is in and it looks really good. This interior, it's already come back all the way around, but we're gonna go ahead and address the doors here. I'm gonna get these door panels off, which I think is just, can it be three screws? Handle and two here, I don't know. Yeah, this must just, <sighs> yeah, that's how you get them off. Just lean back, you know. Anyways, what I'm getting at is this right here kind of ruins it for me. At first I was like, it's an old work truck. We want to have a little bit of the patina left. But then I thought, well, we're going to have nice shiny paint on this. And you're sitting here talking to your rancher neighbor. Bill, what's going on on the inside? And he says, well, the interior's new. And you're going, well, no, you know. So, I think once we get the door panels off, let's scuff this up and let's try to blend in some paint. It's probably not going to be perfect, but let's make it gooder. So if your eyes shooting across this way or straight down leaning in the door, we don't have a bunch of rust and stuff. I got wasps everywhere in this thing. They're yellow and white and black, and red. Get out of here! Surprisingly, the two in the armrest came out easy. Then I got this one here on the crankalizer, kind of like a Mopar design. The screw goes right down the center. Mopar has Allen keys for the most part. I guess you could put whatever style head you wanted to. Uh oh, oh, it's still in there. Lost the biscuit. Speaking of biscuits and gravy, Tracy Lawrence got a new song on, and it's really good. It's a single, I believe. Does this just come off like this? <laughs> right in my teeth. Yeah, I think so. It's just so brittle. Doesn't really stand a chance. See, these are supposed to pop out, but instead the plastic Gave away. Original dust paper. We'll keep that up there. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Need a little bit of protection. Or should we replace it? Yeah, okay. You're getting a little picky. You know all that? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to lose my temper there. It's the right thing to do, okay? One, two, three, this one. Remember that plastic we used on the floor? Well, guess what? We can use it on the door, and they rhyme. <laughs> it's not perfect, but I can guarantee one thing. It's going to seal a lot better than that cardboard that wasn't really sealed. You can see where they kind of haphazardly glued it. Okay, now let me get this off. We're gonna sand this door down just enough to get the uh, little rust pucks out of it. Not gonna go crazy here. Just, uh, we want a little bit of age to it. It's a 78, but we want it smooth enough that we can Blend in some paint 
around here and it'll look good looking in through the window because remember this side's going to be very shiny brand new white first set i've been working on the railroad nope still have not done that this is perfect you want to get all this sand dust and the new interior in there you know and if you're wondering why didn't you do this first well listen i feel like uh what's his face on uh tool time over the fence so here's the thing we were already waiting for the pedals to dry and what else was there the dash and the steering column did we really need to wait for the doors okay plus i didn't want them kind of wet when we were putting the seat in that could have been a pickle we would have pickled it up Probably could have put this on a DA sander and been done already. But you know, let's do everything the hard way, struggle and complain, and then complain about we could have done it the easy way. Okay. Well, that's really all I'm gonna do, to be honest. We're gonna leave some imperfections, some of these little pits in here, I could get them out, but I want this to look repainted. And this is that slope that's slippery we've talked about many, many times. If we make this perfect, then we got to get into the jams. This would be unacceptable. We'd have to come over here and fix this and this. You know, it just starts this whole process of everything needing to be perfect. We're wanting this good or ish enough as where you can just swing into Dollar General and all of a sudden it's a car show. Yep. Over here working on this door, starting to. Notice this window rolls up really easy. That's nice. But then down, it's really not, it's not jiving. So gonna make some adjustments here to the rollers and the slides and get this thing greased up. See if we can get that moving better. Just a little spray can here, so I'm not worried about Over spray, after spray, after shave, brute. That's what I wear. Anyway, we can control it. This is going to be uh, probably 15 very light coats because I'm lazy, and the last thing I want to do is sand some more. Light, light. Just let it eat. I didn't even sand this here. I kind of just feathered it off because we need to blend this back into what's here. There we go. Let that dry for seven minutes, 42 seconds, and then coat two through 14. Guys, about four coats in. Got a ways to go. Again, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to do the thing. It's looking a lot better. And then we've got this feathered off right here. So that just fades into the original color. So these F-series doors are super basic. Um, all we have to do, basically your vertical is this track here, which you can see the grease is dried up. That's not a big deal. We'll actually just pack high temp uh, wheel grease in here. The roller seems fine. Sometimes you gotta hammer in a new roller. And then this is what takes pressure when the window is going down. When you, when you pull the glass down, it wants to pivot or pitch into this track over here. So I'm going to loosen this, and all we're going to do is swing it to the left. We're going to widen this gap, and this window is going to go down like butter. Got all the coats done on this side? Sure. Looking pretty good. Got the other side. Regulator. Whew. It's still a little tight, but it's definitely much better. I loosened the track on the latch side of the door, which is just two 716 bolts. And if I like to loosen them, just crank the window down, let it find its path, then tighten it. And that also helps significantly. But I'm just gonna go over and do the same exact thing. Pretend that I'm sanding and then pretend to barely tape and then just 
And then we gotta sit around and wait for it to dry, I guess. This door down as well. It's looking pretty good ish, you know. Got to uh, run in and get some clear. I am flat out of clear. I'm actually gonna hit these with the coat of that as well because of all the abuse this takes with arms and everything else just adds an extra layer without just pouring the color to it. So while this is drying, I'm gonna run in, grab a can, and then this should be good enough to Got the doors all cleared up. They're looking great. Now it's kind of just the waiting game. Waiting for all this to cure enough where we can get the door panels on. This interior is looking very sharp. Well, fellers and fell, that's the moment two and a half you have been waiting for. Six, nine you have been waiting for. Door cards, got them to fit. Took a little bit of back and forth. Had to trim them up, make some adjustments, but they're on, looks great, paint's okay. And it looks sharp. Got to put the window cranks on. I got some chrome and wood grain door locks coming. Uh, like I said earlier, got the radio coming. We got uh, headliner, front glass, seals, rear seals, couple other small doodabs, pedal pads. Just have to update you guys on that stuff as it goes. Gonna wipe everything down, clean everything up. It's been a busy few days. And we'll get a final look at the F100 interior here in a few minutes. Should have got some wood grain door handles. They make them? I don't know. I was asking you. Doubtful. Very. Woo! It's been a busy few days, I'll tell you that, but the interior on this Ford truck looks absolutely incredible. Look how clean and simple it looks. It's just neat, orderly. There's nothing over the top. There's nothing that says you can't climb in it with dirty blue jeans or use it for work or go fishing or pull a boat or a date night for that matter. We stripped everything down. We rust treated the floor, patched that up, seam sealed it, pour 15, new carpet, sanded the dash, painted that, new dash pad, put in Dakota digital gauges, got all those wired in, fixed all the wiring in there, cleaned the lens, put a new bezel in. We refoamed and recovered the seat. Jessica even painted the frames on that. We cleaned the hardware, pretty much rebuilt all that, cleaned the belts up. Painted the doors, put new door cards in, fixed the rollers on both sides. And then we also went ahead and fixed the window frame, cleaned, prepped, painted that as well for new glass. We still got some more stuff to do. I'm just gonna have to sprinkle that in when we're doing some other stuff, like I've mentioned several times in this, but we'll update you as you go. I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys enjoy what we're doing here with the truck. And as a reminder, one of you could win this thing. The giveaway is going on right now through March 15th. Do not procrastinate. A lot of the stuff sells out quickly. Every $5 you spend gives you one entry for a chance to win this truck. And yes, for you Canadians, my neighbors up north, this includes you with the exception of Quebec. You can also see all the rules and the no purchase required and all that over at bicegripgarage.com. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned. Up next, I think we're gonna get into the engine on this. And I listened to you guys, I read the comments. We're not just doing a bone stock 300. Let's just say she's gonna have some pep in her step. We're gonna do a few things to really put the power to the ground in this thing, but still have reliability and fuel mileage. Yeah, how do you have all three? You're gonna see you soon. Thanks guys, appreciate you very much. See you soon. Oh, now the cleanup.